أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today inshallah another installment from the glorious Quran chapter 85 Surah Al-Buruj the constellations Now many of the chapters of the last part of the Quran remind of the day of judgment the surah points man to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through contemplating his great signs in the universe so he may humble himself to Allah and obey his commands. The vastness of the universe and its perfect harmony are all signs of the competence and power of the creator who will return man back to life to answer for his actions. Arrogance and, transaction and transgression against others in this life will carry a severe penalty in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us he is a witness for what man does and he will reward or punish with perfect justice. His wrath on the ones who kill his servants will be most severe. Fear of Allah and knowledge of his attributes and greatness, they go together. The one who does not fear Allah in the day of judgment is an ignorant person who will suffer a terrible fate in the hereafter. So if we look at, at the verses uh, from بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ Verse 1 وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ By the sky with the constellations. I mean, that, that is such a great sign if you, can, if you really step back and think and, and look and contemplate the vastness of the universe, the uncountable stars and galaxies, they're all signs of the of the magnificence of, of power, of the power of Allah. The galaxy, they are great signs that Allah is using to draw our attention to an important point that he wants to tell us in this chapter. The perfect harmony of uncountable body, celestial bodies and the vastness of the universe are the widest path for man to know Allah through. It is an invitation to contemplate and recognize the greatness of the Creator. Verses 2 and 3, وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُودُ وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ Two other things that Allah adds to the, uh, to, to the Qasam. And by the promised day, that's the day of judgment, and by the witness and the witnessed. So the day of judgment and taking account are among the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This day is more terrifying than the magnificence of the universe and the constellations. The witness and the witnessed is a reference to everything in existence because everything is either a witness on something or witnessed by something. So it's a reference for everything. And these are great signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he mentioned to get our attention to an important topic. In verse 4, Allah says, Qutila ashabu al-ukhdud, destroyed were the people of the trench. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the people of the trench to support his prophet and the believers at a time when Quraysh was tormenting them. The details of the story are not important here, but they are mentioned in detail in a, in a, in a long authentic hadith. It is a story for all believers who suffer because of their belief in Allah and a warning to the ones who defy Allah and hurt his servants. Allah says in verses 5 through 7, النار ذات الوقود إذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود destroyed were the people of the trench that's the first verse the fire supplied with fuel while they sat around it and they and were witnessing what they did to the believers so there was a the, the long story short the tyrant king ordered his people to revoke their faith in Allah and worship him but they refused so the, his army dug trenches and filled them with fire and the ones who refused to, to revoke their faith were tossed into the fire so these transgressors were merciless they were not even satisfied by just killing the believers but wanted to sit there and watch them burn the, this points to a deep resentment and hatred of believers they were they were sitting there watching watching the believers burn. وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ In verse 8, Allah gives the reason. Why did they do that? 
they begrudged them only because they believed in Allah, the Almighty, the praiseworthy. That was their only crime. Is you know the only crime that deserving such merciless treatment treatment was that they believed in Allah. الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء شهيد. This Allah, this beautiful Allah, is to whom belongs the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth. Allah is witness over everything. Everything belongs to Allah with full freedom to do with it whatever he wills. This is a repeating incident that we can see parallels in our lives. You know, we, we see believing tribes and, and cities and countries. They're mercilessly destroyed only because they believe in Allah, not for any other reason. So people may do whatever they like, but should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a witness to their actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything, kulli shay, without exception. Everything that can be seen, Allah sees it. This verse should make man steadfast and obedient to him and a de- to Allah and a deterrent to any evil act because Allah is witnessing. In verse 10, Allah threatens threatens these uh, these people who who kill his or who um, hurt his believers his uh, you know his servants inna alladhina fatanul mu'minina wal mu'minati thumma lam yatubu falahum 'adhabu jahannam wa lahum 'adhabu al-hariq those who tempt the believers men and women then do not repent for them is the punishment of hell for them is the punishment of burning so the ones who kill the believers and do not stop and repent will deserve the torment of hellfire. The repetition of hellfire, of uh, hell and the, pun- the burning means that they will have both the psychological torment of being in hellfire as well as the physical punishment of burning at the same time. So this is not a repetition. These are two modes of, of punishment because Allah Taala, when he punishes, his punishment is most severe. The ones who act this way and, 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 and do, not fear, do not fear this verse, they lack intelligence because they put themselves in a position of eternal loss and torment. And then Allah tells us about his, his servants. Those who believe and do righteous deeds will have gardens beneath which rivers flow. That is the great triumph. The ones who believe in Allah and do good are the successful ones who will be rewarded with eternal happiness and success. When Allah, the Great, says that the reward is great, then it's beyond imagination. Because you take it from the from the statue of or stature of whoever says it. So it's the, the reward from Allah is you know is, is unimaginable. And then the verse comes, verse 12. Inna batsha rabbika lashadid. The onslaught of your Lord is severe. Batsh, onslaught, is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes violently. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forbearing. He's merciful. But when the punishment is due, his punishment is very severe and violent. When batsh, batsh is attributed to Allah most merciful, it is done out of necessity and for a perfect wisdom. Just like the difference between, you know, somebody losing a leg. There's a difference between if a criminal cuts it, an accident, or a surgeon amputates it. The, the outcome is the same, but when a surgeon does it, it is for the greater good and with wisdom and is described as an act of mercy. So no evildoer should ever feel safe from Allah's punishment in this life. Allah's onslaught is terrifying by itself. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds in the verse, but sharabika la shadeed, it's severe to emphasize its magnitude. So it's not only violent, it's severe. This divine threat should give pause to anyone who dares to disobey Allah and hurt his servants. Allah says in verses 13 to 15, إِنَّهُ هُوَ يُبْدِئُ وَيُعِيدُ وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودُ ذُو الْعَرْشِ الْمَجِيدُ it is he who begins and repeats. He begins creation and he will bring man back to life. And he is the forgiving, the, the loving, possessor of the glorious throne. 
a confirmation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring man back to life to answer for his actions in, his, in this life. He forgives the ones who return to him, and he manifests his love with abundant bounties in this life and in, in, and in the hereafter. And then the pivotal verse in the chapter comes in verse 16. فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدٌ Doer of whatever he wills. فَعَال is the exaggerated form of فَعَلَ of to do, to emphasize that Allah's orders will come to pass. No one can prevent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from achieving what he wills. Whatever he wants happens. هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْجُنُودِ فِرْعَوْنَ وَثَمُودِ Verses 17 through 18. Has there come to you the story of the legions of Pharaoh and Thamud? The strongest tyrants in history were destroyed by Allah when they transgressed the bounds. In fact, those who disbelieve are in denial, and Allah encloses them from beyond. Quraysh was meant specifically in this verse after the mention of what happened to the previous tyrants because they were oppressing the believers, they were oppressing the prophet, they were doing similar things as to what previous natures, nations have done and Allah destroyed them for it. So it's a warning for them. This is valid for every time and age. Anytime somebody thinks that they are so powerful, they can might makes right, they can do whatever they want, then watch out for Allah's onslaught because he will destroy such people. So they exaggerated in all acts of denial to fight Islam, all the while they are in Allah's grip and under his perfect vision and knowledge. It is a divine threat that Allah can exact punishment at any time of his choosing in however manner that pleases him. بَلْ هُوَ قُرْآنٌ مَجِيدٌ فِي لَوْحٍ مَحْفُوظٍ The last two verse, verses of the chapter. In fact, it is a glorious Qur'an in a preserved tablet. This Qur'an is protected from any change or deficiency perfect in its content. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is advising man to follow his instructions in the Qur'an and reap the rewards in this life and in the next. It is a protection from Allah's punishment and a path to eternal happiness when it's followed. And the last point is the, the naming of the surah Al-Buruj is the heavens with its wonders were created to lead man to recognize the greatness of Allah and his power through contemplating his great signs. That, that's, that's the only function of the universe. That's the major function of the universe. It leads you to the magnificence of the creator. The motion of earth as it orbits around the sun makes 12 different constellations visible, one per month. This is, you know, for, for January, you see this constellation, this Burj, you know, Buruj is the plural of Burj, is constellation. So these are all great signs from Allah, so man can recognize him and obey his commands because he will return him one day for judgment and recompense. Subhanakallah bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka tubhaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.